What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the upfitter auxiliary switches on the Rams, the, more of the commercial side of the Rams. So more of the Ram 2500, uh, the, you know, the 3500, 4500, the commercial series. Now, not all of them are going to come standard with these auxiliary switches. Um, some of them are going to be more like on the Ram 2500. It's going to be more of a optional upgrade. My truck actually came with them. So let me just kind of show you what they look like on the inside. Okay. So this is what I'm referring to. So on the Rams, if your truck comes with these auxiliary switches, okay, these are more meant for if you're doing commercial work, whether you have a plow or a certain trailer or a PTO or something like that, you can actually have them programmed in to these auxiliary switches. Now what's really cool is these are all programmable. So in your computer, your, your instrument panel up here, you can actually control what you want to do with these. Typically, by default, the first auxiliary switch and the second auxiliary switch are directly straight run to the battery. Auxiliary three, four, and five are going to be more based off the ignition. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you can program these three switches to do different things. Um, so we're going to get into that in a little bit. Right now, I've actually already pre-wired my rock lights to the auxiliary one. I have my wheel lights to the auxiliary two. Um, today, I'm going to be doing my interior lights to auxiliary three. And I'm probably going to end up hooking up um, my fog lights to like auxiliary four. And it may be like auxiliary five. I'll get around to it. I'll do like uh, light bars or something like that. But what I like about that is that I don't have to keep running like switches like this or you know different things like that it keeps it real nice and clean um, and they light up it's just very nice and it's hardwired through the truck's computer system okay so when you actually have the upfitter switch auxiliary switch package on your truck it's going to come with a bag full of wiring now these two boxes right here this big gray one and the black one there those are typically when you're going to be using like a PTO or something like that. Then there's some other wires that have a smaller end to them. I'm not exactly sure what those go to. Um, I think they go to a different setup. And then you have these ones. Now these are the ones I primarily will be working with. They have the wider flat end here, as you can see here. Okay. And here's what you typically do. Now it comes with extra wires. So, you know, they're not all gonna be used because um, you typically have five. All right, so let me climb up here. So as you can see right here, when you have the upfitter switch package, you're gonna have the top one and then the bottom one. Now remember, there's five auxiliary switches and it typically starts with one is the top left, two, three, four, and then I believe this top left bottom one is number five. And then if you're not sure which one it is, they are pre-labeled. Let me see if I can find it. You see it right there in the top? Right there. See it says one and three? So what that says is the top left is one, three is the top right, two is the bottom left, four is the bottom right, and then the top left here is number five. So when in doubt, always look at the, 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 the housing here. It'll actually tell you. So basically, here's what you're gonna do. You're going to unplug your upfitter switch housing out of here. Now keep in mind, these are already fused in. So they're already, they already have a, a fuse inside this box for each one of those five auxiliary switches. So uh, you're basically gonna unplug it. Now to do it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a set of needle nose, and this is like a little rubber uh, plug. Just kind of grab this like so and pull it out pops out just like that. And now you expose that. Then what you're gonna do, take one of your wires with the, with the big flat head here, and you're gonna shove it in there. And it comes with a rubber bushing gasket already, so these are gonna be waterproof as well. So you shove it in there. Till it clicks. Now once it's clicked, it's locked in there. It's a waterproof seal. Now this lead right here is gonna be my number three auxiliary switch. This is what I'm gonna end up wiring my interior um, LED lights to. So then 
once I get that wired in from the inside out here, I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. So I have, as of right now, I have four LED interior strips. I have one mounted here. I have one on the passenger side. As of right now, I just have one on each back. It's just kind of mounted up underneath the back seat a little bit. Pretty much just held with like a 3M tape, um, pretty heavy duty on both sides, okay? So all the wiring comes to this main box and that's your remote. Then I have right here, I took um, positive and negative wire, spliced it into the actual um, outlet that goes pl plugs into the box. Then I took this red and black wire, ran it up under here, as you can see right here through the main firewall here into the engine bay. Up here. Okay, so then what I did is I took the negative and I spliced on a connector here. I'll tape that up and then I'm probably just gonna ground it right to the frame here. And then we're just gonna take the positive and we're gonna splice it into the upfitter switch that we originally installed a little bit ago. So let me get this taped up, mounted to the body screw here for a ground, and then I'll show you a really cool way to splice in uh, these kind of wires. So I'll be back in one second. <clears throat> okay, next. Now this is the fun part. Okay, so then what you wanna do is take the upfitter switch wire that we did before and go ahead and strip it. Okay. Then we're gonna take our positive from the wire we ran to the firewall that goes to the LED light power. And let's again strip that. Now, normally what most people do is they will go ahead and solder these together, which is always the best way. You know, use a twist tie and tape it up, but the best way is to actually solder them to make sure you get a good connection. Now that's not always fun and it's not always easy. And uh, so I've been using products like this. So you can get these on Amazon, about 10 bucks for a whole kit. So this is what they look like. So they're gonna come in a variety of different sizes for different gauge wires. And there's usually a size guide right here. It tells you like the blue will go from like a 14 gauge up to a 16. So it's color coded, but these are really nice. And again, and you can actually buy these on Amazon. Now there's a couple different manufacturers that make these. Um, I'll put the link in the description, but if you look here, it's K-U-J-E-C-T. Um, I believe this was a 120 count set, but um, they're only about 10, 11 bucks. So here's what you're gonna do. And this is what makes this so easy. These are shrink wrap solder fittings, okay? So I just grabbed the blue one. Let me close this up. And here's how easy this is. Now, what you're gonna do is just kind of put this together, slide a fitting over top, just like so, all right? Then what I like to do is I like to kind of separate the wires here, maybe something like that, just a little bit like that, and then I'll separate the other side, like so. Then I kind of stick them together and then give them a little bit of a twist. Okay, that way they're connected in a, in a straight line and that way they're also tight, okay? So if you pull on them, they're pretty tight already to begin with when you do it that way. Then you slide your sleeve up over top and then you wanna try to guesstimate as best you can the middle of those two wires where they threaded together. You wanna put your solder fitting See if I can get closer here. You that little gray solder fitting, you want that right in the middle, okay? Then what you do is you could take a, a heat gun, but I bought one of these little mini blow torches off Amazon. They're like, again, they're about 10 bucks. They're great for, um, you know, little soldering jobs like this. And um, it just takes like regular, like cigarette lighter butane. You just fill in the back hole here. So what you do is once that two wires are threaded together, you got your shrink wrap fitting over top. Then what you're gonna do is you just solder it together. So turn it on.
And what happens is while you're heating that up, the, sh the solder will actually melt right into the wires. And then once you're done with that, you don't need a whole lot, then just go ahead and shrink the rest of your shrink wrap. Okay, done. Now, if you see, you have a nice waterproof shrink wrapped soldered fitting and it took me seconds and it was so easy with these fittings and with a little mini blowtorch, it just makes your wiring soldering so easy. So if you end up doing little jobs like this for fun or maybe you're, uh, you know, do a lot of wiring for stereos or, or you know, wiring for cars or wiring for motorcycles or whatever the case is, if you if you're trying to solder two wires together, even electronics, these fittings are fantastic. And that little um, blowtorch here, this thing works great. Um, and you can get them in different sizes. This is just a nice little compact one I got. Again, this right here was maybe about $12. I use it all the time. And you can get a whole box of these um, solder shrink wrap fittings for maybe about 10, 12 bucks. But trust me, it's nice and tight, waterproof, great um, seal. And then what I typically do after that is I'll just take a little bit of electrical tape and just wrap, wrap over it real quick. So let me do that real quick. Okay, wrapped a little bit of electrical tape around that fitting, nice and tight. Everything's waterproof, soldered together. So then basically, now I have my wires here and I'll tighten them back up in here and I'll zip tie them off to the side out of the way. But that's basically all you gotta do. Now, we just gotta plug our upfitter switch back in. So let's go and just plug it in like this. So it clicks, now it's done. Let me go in. We're gonna plug in our lights in here. Okay. Okay, now that they're plugged in, as you can see, these lights right here are not turned on. And as you can see over here, the auxiliary switches are not plugged in. So now let's try it out and see how, how it works. So let's just recap. I, I took my LED lights, stuck them where I wanted them. The wires all ran to the main computer box. I ran a positive and negative wire from this computer box up through the firewall, connected the positive to one of my ups, upfitter switches, which was auxiliary three ground in my negative. Now, once I'm all done here, I'm gonna zip tie this all out of the way and make it nice and neat. But let's try it out. Turn on ignition. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check this out and see if we can get something going on here. Let me shut. So we're gonna look for, so let's go to settings. And it says commercial. Okay, so I'm in the commercial setting. Then once you get in here, you wanna put your code in. All right, auxiliary switches. Now let me go back, I hate saying but All right, so once you get into there, you can hit auxiliary switches, go over, auxiliary switch one, two, three, four, five. Now we just wired in three, so let's go down to three, scroll over, type, latching or momentarily. Now what that means is once you click the button, on latching, if you click the button, it's automatically going to stay on. Momentary means if you hold the button in, that's when it has power. But as soon as you let go of the button, it turns off. So I don't want that, so I'm going to leave it on latching. So let's go back. Power source, battery, or ignition. I'm going to do battery. Since these are just regular lights, so I'm going to go up and hook it on to battery. Now it's on battery. So that means auxiliary switch now is straight powered through the battery. Back up. Last state, that's more, so that's that's for certain conditions, probably for more of your commercial things like your your PTOs and your, and your, and your plows and things like that. For LED lights, it's probably not gonna meet the conditions, so I'm not even worried about that. So let's back out of there. Okay, so we're out of there. Now, 
let's see what happens. Okay, so as of right now, no lights are on. Okay, floors are dark. Let's go over here and let's go with auxiliary switch three. There we go. Turn them off. Check the auxiliary. See, over here is a light. Let's go to auxiliary switch three. There you go. Now I have a remote up here so I can just turn these to whatever color I want. Okay. So there you go. So there it is, guys. I mean, I can always use the phone app or the or the switch here to change colors, um, whatever I want to do. But once I find the color I want, what's nice is I can turn them on and off as I see fit. So there. So if I get my truck and I want to, you know, run my rock lights and everything else, turn on number three, boom, done. How clean and easy is that? So just wanted to show you guys if you happen to have the ups the upfitter switches as part of your RAM. These are fantastic and they're so easy to connect to with that switch housing that's already in the engine bay. Everything's already pre-wired. Uh, everything's already going to have its own fuse. So it's fantastic. And being that you can con control which switch does what uh, right through your, your menu here, it's super awesome. So here's what I'm talking about before. My rock lights are not turned on right now. Let me go over here. Let's hit auxiliary switch, if I can reach it. Go with one, okay? There they go, okay? So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to show you how easy and simple and convenient these um, auxiliary upfitter switches are for the Ram commercial line. Again, they make everything so much easier when wiring them up because then you don't have to drill holes and put switches in your dash and, and you know, because if you ever stop using that switch, now you're stuck with a hole in your dash. So you don't have to do that. When you have the upfitter switch package, you don't have to do that anymore. It's already been done for you. You just have to tap into it. Um, so again, right now I have my rock lights to auxiliary switch one, my wheel lights to auxiliary switch two. I have my interior floor lights to auxiliary switch three. I'm probably gonna be um, rewiring my fog lights here. I'm gonna put those into auxiliary switch four and then probably going to do some LED bars uh, some other time and put that into auxiliary switch five. So basically all my custom lighting is all conveniently located right on my dash and auxiliary switches one through five. So that's what I'm doing, but I just wanted to show you this quick video on how to do it. It's super easy, super simple. Um, so if you happen to have this in your RAM, definitely take advantage of it. Don't be afraid of the wiring. It's very simple. You don't need all the wiring that's in that package. Like when you look at this big bag of wiring and you don't know what you're doing, don't worry about it. You don't need it all. All you need is a few of these pieces of wire here and they come with extras. So you're not even using them all. You really only need five of these that actually have the wide, the wide flat tip to plug right in. Everything's labeled for you. All you gotta do is ground your wire, plug in your positive to the auxiliary switch number that you want it to be at, done. It's super simple, it already comes with a fuse. So hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, if you like this type of video, please smash that thumbs up button, uh, subscribe to the channel. I do apologize for being a little slow in the videos. It's been a pretty hectic summer, this whole corona shutdown thing. Uh, I've been really busy at work. It's just been very, very busy um, with a lot going on. So I am going to start trying my very best to start putting out a little bit more videos than I have for the last month or so. Um, I've just been really, really busy, so I do apologize for that, but stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment, uh, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like, because I do appreciate the feedback. If you have anything you want to add, please tell me. I always like to learn from you guys just as much as I hope that you're learning from me. So again, um, again I just want to say thank you to all of you who've been sticking with me and subscribing to the channel. I truly appreciate it. Stay tuned because there's more to come. So as always, see you in the next video.